Okay, let's talk about this basic one-step equation. Now, I called it a one-step equation because it requires literally one step to solve. So when you're solving equations or learning how to solve equations in algebra, it's kind of like a staircase, all right? You start off with learning one-step equations. Obviously, it just takes one step to get the solution. Then you graduate up to two-step equations where there's you know, two steps involved, and then you just go into multiple step equations. And what we're talking about here is uh, linear equations. And uh, if you think you could solve this particular equation, we have two thirds t is equal to five. Let me pause the video. It should take you all of about 17 seconds to actually uh, to do. Now, I want to say this much. I'm going to encourage uh, you to solve or think about solving these um, one step equations, things that involve fractions, stuff that looks like this in a particular way, because uh, if you do it in the way that I'm going to try to discourage you to do it, you can get confused because students don't like fractions. They get confused with fractions. And generally speaking, fractions get a bad rap from math students. You know, people get angry. They're like, mm, fractions, you know, just give me nice numbers like two and three to work with. Well, it doesn't work that way, right? we got to <laughs> work with fractions as well. But fractions, you got to make friends with fractions. You don't have to... You know, if you don't like fractions, you're going to have a tough time in algebra because fractions are everywhere. So we want to settle down and uh, just, you know, be nice and calm about solving things like this. Now, again, if you think you could solve it, you know, solve it. And if you're comfortable with the way you're solving it and it's different than the way I'm solving it, even if it's the way I'm trying to discourage you to solve it, as long as you can uh, confidently understand what you're doing and get the right answer, then stick with that way okay so just you know use this um, video as feedback but again uh, what I'm gonna you know I've been teaching math for a long long time I really want to discourage you from doing one thing and encourage you to uh, solving this in another way so I'm gonna get into this in just one second but first let me quickly introduce myself my name is John I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math I'm also a middle and high school math teacher and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have a ton of courses ranging from pre-algebra to pre-calculus, uh, many, many uh, uh, test prep courses. So if you're studying for an exam like the GED, SAT, ACT, teacher certification, college entrance, college placement, I can help you out. I have tons of different tests. So um, obviously, if you're taking a test and you want to see if I have have your exam, just go to my website and check out my full course catalog. I also do a lot with homeschooling. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. Now, one thing before we get um, going, I stress the importance of note-taking in all my videos. At least I try to. Uh, notes are really the foundational secret to being successful in mathematics. So take a look at your notes. If they're anything less than stellar, you want to improve your notes, okay? Then just believe me on this. I've been teaching math for decades. you got to take great math notes, especially more advanced mathematics. So uh, work on your notes. And in the meantime, if you want to use my notes to study from, you can. I'll leave links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so let's get into this problem. Now, uh, the, the main idea here is that we're dealing with this fraction. But let's take a look at a simpler version of this problem that doesn't have a fraction. So let's just go ahead and actually let's compare. We have 2 thirds t is equal to 5. All right, so 2 thirds t is equal to 5. So what's going on here? Well, we have 2 thirds times t, okay, is equal to a number. So an easier version of this problem would be like 2 times x is equal to this number, right? 2x is equal to 8. So how do I solve this particular equation? Well, this is multiplication. This is 2 times x is equal to 8. What I need to do is just divide both sides of the equation by 2. Okay, when you do that, you have x is equal to 8 divided by 2 is 4, and that is the solution. Okay, so if you understand this, and if you understand how to solve basic one-step equations, then, you know, we're, we're going to be ready to talk about this one. Okay, so here we have 2 thirds times this number, or this variable, 2 thirds times t is equal to 5. You're probably thinking, well, don't I just follow the same steps? Yes, that's good thinking. Okay, you should be thinking in those ways, right? In other words, like, hey, should I divide both sides of the equation by two thirds? Because I just saw you solve this equation by dividing both sides of the equation by this number. Okay, now let's get into this. All right, so 
This is what I don't want you to do, okay? I want to discourage you. And it's easy to understand why students think uh, how to solve these equations this way. They're saying, oh, two-thirds times t is equal to five. I should divide both sides of the equation by two-thirds, okay? Now, technically, yes, that's what you're supposed to do, okay? This is what you're supposed to do. But you can see here I have a, a complex fraction. Now, two-thirds divided by two-thirds is what? Anything divided by anything or anything divided by itself is always one. So let's go ahead and write this right here. So two-thirds divided by two-thirds is one or one t or simply t. So that's good, okay? Now, this is the part right here that gets students kind of confused, right? So, you, you know, a lot of students, they don't like working with fractions. And now you've got a complex fraction. Now, this is not difficult, okay? But let's just talk about what this means. This is saying 5, all right, let's write this right here, 5. Now, what's this uh, state? Well, that's divided by, so let's write that right there. Let's put the division operator. 5 divided by 2 thirds, okay? All right, so that's what this complex fraction means. It means 5 divided by 2 thirds. So now you're going to have to go ahead and go, okay, 5 divided by 2 thirds. You got to know something about fractions. So I got to flip this upside down and turn this into multiplication. That's 3 halves, and that's 5 over 1. So that's going to be 15 halves, okay? So that is the right answer, okay? And I'm trying to discourage you not to solve this equation in this manner, although technically it is the correct way to approach it. Okay, so some of you might be kind of confused, like, well, why are you telling me to do something that's going to give me the right answer? Well, because you're, you're going to have to write this complex fraction. You're going to have to do these kind of steps. And there's, it's, this is kind of rich for making errors. It's like, you know, it's easy for you to kind of make a misstep, especially when you're learning basic algebra. All right, now let's go ahead and uh, show you by the way, t, 1t is going to be equal to uh, 15 over 2. That is our solution. All right, now let's go ahead and show you the way that I want you to do this, all right? I'm going to encourage you to do this. Now, again, if you were taught the previous way or if you're comfortable doing problems the, in the previous uh, manner, okay, that I just showed you right up here, and you always uh, do well, and you're like, no, 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 I get this, I don't want to get confused, then stick with this, okay? I, I'm not trying to force you to change, but, uh, you know, over decades of teaching math, you know, kind of see where students make a lot of errors. So I'm going to encourage you to do this. All right, so here we have two-thirds t is equal to five. First of all, anytime you see a fraction, you're dealing with solving equations, you need to kind of be a little bit on high alert. Now, what's the objective here? The objective is to solve this equation is to get t by itself. Okay, so if I want to get t by itself, what can I do to this side of the equation to get one t? Okay, well, if you have two thirds, if I multiply this by three halves, right, what's three halves times two thirds? Well, that's going to be six over six or one. Okay, because remember, you know, I'm assuming you know how to multiply fractions. So we're trying to come up with some little step, right? Some mathematical step that we can take so that we can get a 1t or t. So it's just easy. Whatever this fraction is right here, flip it upside down. Right? It's always this way. Whatever the fraction is, flip it upside down. So this is going to be 3 halves, okay? And you're going to multiply, and this will be 1t or t. So you're like, oh, that's cool, okay? But remember, in algebra, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So here, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by three halves. So if I got to multiply this side, okay, I'm going to have to multiply this side by the same number, okay? All right, so when I do that, what do I got? Well, five or five over one, okay, times three halves is 15 over two. So one T or T is equal to 15 halves, and you are done. Okay, but this is a much cleaner way to think about it, and it's effectively doing the same thing that uh, that we're doing over here. Okay, so you know you can make an argument. Well, you're doing the same steps, or you know this is a shortcut version. Yes, it is, but this is you know this is more involved. Okay, and I'm not trying to purposely make it more confusing for you, but this, believe me, is a nicer way to handle these problems. Let's take a look at one more example, and uh, maybe you can do it. Let's do. Uh, 2 fifths uh, x is equal to 1 third, okay? So 
how would you do this using the way that I'm going to try it or the way that I would uh, tell you, you know, discourage you, right? So I can say, well, x is going to be equal to, I can divide both sides of the equation by two fifths, all right? I could do that. But then again, I got this complex fraction, right? I don't want to mess around with that. So what can I do here? Well, if you want to pause the video and just test your understanding real quick, go ahead and do that. Well, what you can do is say, well, I need to get x by myself. I'm going to flip this upside down. That's five halves. That'll give me a 1x or x. That's what I'm looking for. But then I got to multiply this side by 5 halves as well. Super easy. Multiply the respective numerators and denominator. I get 5 over uh, 5 over 6. So the solution is 5, 6, and I'm done. Have a nice day, right? Not that difficult. So, you know, when you're learning one-step equations, anytime fractions are involved in an equation, this is a typical hotspot where students end up getting confused. And it's understandable, okay? Because if you're dealing with complex fractions, you know, there's a reason why they're called complex fractions because they're a little bit more complex. So we don't want to make the problem any more complex than it necessarily needs to be. All right, so if all this makes sense to you, you're like, okay, this was actually a pretty decent video uh, and, you know, might be helpful in some small, tiny way, well, then please consider smashing that like button. That definitely helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have over 1,000 plus math videos, basic to advanced math, and I'm adding stuff all the time. So if you like my teaching style, you can learn a ton uh, from me uh, just by going through all my videos that I've posted through the years. And of course, I'm posting new material all the time, basic to advanced mathematics. But my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time. And have a great day.